Greetings, how are y'all doing out there today? I am Wilma Browder. This is First Church of Social Media. I hope y'all had a marvelous week. I hope y'all are preparing for this season. This is the season of giving. This is the Christmas season. And we only have what, four more days. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And we got that's Christmas Eve on the fourth day. So I hope you all are preparing for that. And um, I have a great word for you all. This is going to be a, a two-part series. Um, this is part one of the series. And um, we're going to go right into a word of prayer. Uh, Father God, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. We so love you, we honor you, we worship and praise your holy name, O oh God. Right now, O oh Father, we ask you to remove me, O oh God. And fill me up with you, O oh God. Fill the atmospheres up with you, O oh God. God, we ask you to touch each and every person that is listening or going to listen, O oh Father. We ask you that you intertwine this word into their soul, O oh God. God, we ask you to remove any and everything that is around them, O oh God, to distract them, O oh God, that is not of you, O oh Father. Father, we ask of you right now just to have your way in this day, O oh God. Have your way in this word, O oh Father. We are no chains are going to be broken today, O oh God. People are going to be delivered, O oh God, and set free, O oh Father. And have a clear understanding more about you, O oh God. So, God, we so love you right now, O oh God, and we honor you. We're going to give you the glory, O oh Father, in the mighty name of Yahshua, Hamasiah, O oh God, the Jesus, the Messiah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Today's message is coming out of Genesis 1, verse 27. Again, that's Genesis 1, verse 27. And it reads as follows. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. Today's message is titled, A Picture in a Picture. The Picture in a Picture. An early consumer implementation of a picture in a picture was a multivision set-top box. It was not a commercial success. Later, the PIP, Picture in a Picture, became available as a feature of advanced television receivers. The first widespread consumer implementation of a picture in a picture was produced by Philips in 1983. Their high-end high television sets, a separate video or RF input was available on the, black, on the back of the set and displayed in black and white. In one of the four corners of the screen, you will see another screen. And this was called the picture in the picture. So you would see what's on the regular screen, and then you have another screen, and you could be viewing another channel. Televisions at this time were still analog format, and earlier versions of the PIP, picture in the picture, implemented in an analog were too costly. New digital technology allowed the second video signal to be digitized and saved in a digital memory chip, then replayed in a mini version. While the new technology was not good enough for the color or full screen viewing it, it did not provide a low cost in the picture and picture feature. So what they was trying to implement was that basically you could be watching something on your main screen and then watching something on your little screen that will be in the corner and this will call be called a picture in a picture it brings me to this verse that moses was trying to describe to us through the holy spirit and this verse states that so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them so when you say, so God created man in his own image, it, it brings me to the picture in a picture. Because on the main screen, who are you going to see? Are you going to see yourself or are you going to see God? 
And then on the little screen, are you going to see yourself or God? Because what it is, is, is that really God created us as a two-part being. That is your, your flesh and your spirit. And we know that God is created as a three-part being. He's created as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So if we look deeper into ourselves, we see ourselves on the main screen. But on the little screen, we then see God. And that is how we form our picture in a picture. So I want you to understand, as I break down the three parts of how we intertwine in them, and I know that the, in the physical eye, you're saying that God said we're created in his image, but we don't look like him. He's not talking about the physical image. He's talking about the spiritual image. You see, if we read further up in chapter 1, around verse 26, He's saying that he created us to his likeness. And it says our likeness. Meaning that our likeness, the God, the three-part being, the this God, this, the Father, is simply defined as um, the, the definition of unity is unified into something whole. So and then the second one is mathematically the number one. So, and if you look closer at the word unity, if you look at the first three letters, which is U N I, and you break it down, it says you wouldn't have been a biological father. So there has to be some type of connection between your father and your father. In other words, your spiritual father has to be connected to you because you're connected to your biological father. Once again, that is a three-part being right there. That's your father, the spiritual father, and you. We're just sticking with this number three. You'll see where we're getting to. And then as we go further down, then into we, 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 as we see that we are created in his own image, and then he says the image of God, he created him. Who is him? Because if we look at him in this sentence and then we go back to verse 26 and he says our, he's not, he's not talking singular. He's talking plural. That means that when we look at, one, look at ourselves it's, it, and, and we sometimes judge ourselves on how we look, but it's not even about how we look. Because he created us to his likeness. That means that all of us have something in us that's way more beautiful than you can ever see, maybe. That you might not get, maybe. And I want to tell you that maybe you might be the one that's suffering from depression. May you, maybe you might be the one who don't quite get life. Maybe you're the one that don't understand why nobody likes you. I'm here to tell you that you are unique in your own little way. All of us are. All of us have some type of gift. All of us have some type of purpose. And maybe you have not found it. But I'm here to tell you, if you get connected to the Father, then maybe you can find your purpose. Maybe you can find your destiny. Maybe you have a clear understanding of who you are and whose you are. Because that's what it is. Sometimes we forget about who we are or whose we are. In other words... I am in Christ. So I know who my father is. And I'm not talking about my biological father. I'm talking about the one who reigns and rules over me, over my life, who is number one, mathematically, unity. I am here today so that we can understand where can we find unity. Sometimes we're looking in the wrong places. And I'm here to tell you that we have to look in the picture in the picture. In other words, we have to look deep down in ourselves. We have to find ourselves. In other words, it starts in your heart. It's in your heart. He looks at your heart. And you have to dig deep down sometimes. And sometimes your heart grows cold. 
And I understand because of the, the trials and the tribulations that we go through and the things that people do to offend you. But you have to remember that the number one bait of Satan is to offend you. So that's not of God for somebody to offend you. We have to realize that we're not, we're not sitting here looking at the people. The people. He said that we wrestle against, uh, we don't wrestle against flesh. We wrestle against the spirits. So yes, we have this borrowed vessel, which is our flesh, but we're really the spirit. So I want you to understand your connection in the unity. I want you to understand that first it's the father, and then it's the son. The son, you are his child. And the son who he allowed to come down on the earth as him. And then, again, he died on the cross for us for our salvation. So first, it's all about the connection between the father who created all, and then it's about the son. Now, we know throughout the day, when you first wake up most of the time, it might be a little dark. And then as the sun begins to rise, it then becomes the light. So if we look deeper into that sentence, as we said that when you begin to wake up, it may be a little dark, but then the sun begins to rise. Hmm. If we look at our life and tribulations and trials, we look at those as dark situations. But as we know, we always see the light at the end of the tunnel, which is the sun who rises. Hmm. So as we look at the dark situations and we know that the sun is going to rise and if we go deeper into that into the New Testament we know that our Lord and Savior they crucified him and he died and then he rose again hmm. so let's translate that into what I just said into the first sentence in other words your dark situations the sun will rise because Jesus Christ rose again on the third day. So your, that means your trials and tribulations and your situations are only temporary and you will be a overcome because if Jesus Christ can beat it, you can beat it. He already have gave you victory. He has already promised to you that you will win. I understand how you feel right now. You might under feel that, hey, I don't know what I'm going to do about this situation. I don't know how I'm going to make it through. Well, I'm here to tell you right now that you have to look at the picture in a picture. You got to look at yourself and then look deep down inside of you. He has instilled in you him because you are created in his image. And that means if you, if he can beat it, you can beat it. You can beat that situation. You can beat the situation that he has placed you in. He's placed you in that situation for a specific reason. That specific reason is to simply to build your faith. Because number one, he has already promised us that we are healed. We are, we are, we already have victory. That means that we have to simply, simply believe. That is it. We have to believe. We have to believe in what the Father has done for us, and he has sent his son down, and he has died on the cross for us. And when he died on the cross for us, and he rose again, then that's how it became the Holy Ghost. So that's the three parts, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It's in you, because you're the pitcher in the pitcher. And I know, I know. Most of the time, we don't even look at the big picture, which is yourself. We're always looking at this little small picture. And let's get the big picture. The bigger picture is, hey, if I accept the Lord Jesus Christ in my life, I will have eternal life. That's what he said. But yet, you want to go through life trying to fight all of these issues and, hey, I can do this on my own. I don't need nobody. If you didn't need nobody, then why is it a three? Why are you, number one, a two-part being? And why is God a three-part being? There's nothing in there, even though they form one, it's nothing in there that's a singular. 
It's nothing in there singular. Nothing. Nothing. Because when he talks, he's saying our, our likeness. Or when he goes further, he says, God, he created him. You have to understand there's nothing singular about your life. Even though it may look like you're in a situation by yourself, you're really not. It's the picture in the picture. And I want you to understand what the picture in the picture is. The picture in the picture is you. Yes, you. But in the inside of you. What's in the inside of you? If it's not God, if it's not Jesus, if it's not the Holy Ghost, then something ain't right about you. Something's not right. You must believe to make it through this life. You must believe and you must be connected to the Father. And the only way to be connected to the Father, as they let us know in Matthew, is through him. That's Jesus, our Lord and Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us. That's the only way you can get to the Father. So again, that's, a three, that's the three-part channel again. The only way you can get to the Father is through the Son. That means you have to accept the Son in your life. And I'm here today to tell you, it's very simple to do. Very simple to do. As I told you before, this message is just part one. Part two is coming on Christmas Eve. We're going to go later in the day. And probably about like 7 o'clock Central Time. I want you to join us to get the second part of this message. Because as you begin to dwell and think about, as I was explaining to you, the picture in the picture, is more to the picture in the picture. It's going to help you even the more develop and think about who you really are. What your purpose is in life. What's your destiny. Because a lot of us are running around here like we own the, own the world. Like we know who we are. We got it. I'm here to tell you, you ain't got it if you ain't got Jesus. You ain't got it. You ain't got it. Everything may look well and everything. But at the end of the day, you ain't got it. If you ain't got the connection, you ain't got it. That's just like on your cell phone. When you're in a bad area, right, you ain't got no signal, you ain't got no bars, you can't make no call. You can't make no call. You can't make a call until you get connected to the cell tower. So I'm here today to introduce to you the cell tower. The cell tower is Jesus. And I'm trying to get you connected so you can make that call. That call for all the calls you're going to make in your life, which is the call for eternal life. I am here to offer an extended invitation to you right now. If you don't get nothing else I say, get this. Through him, there is unity. That means you have to be connected. And I want you to be connected today. Today is your day, people. Today is the day. If you don't know him, we have people right here, right now waiting for you. So you can get to know him. And maybe you do know him. Well, if you do, extend the invitation to somebody that don't know him. Because again, it's not all about you. It's not all about you. So as we discover more and more about ourselves, I just want you to know and get it. That hey, you got to get the picture in the picture. Got to. Got to get the picture in the picture. And understand what the picture in the picture is. But please join us. Please join us on Christmas Eve. 8 o'clock Central Time to understand what the picture in a picture brings. Oh my God. I am so excited. I can't wait just to reveal what God has revealed to me about the picture in a picture. Mm. It's going to blow your mind. But look, once I, I guess again I had said today's message is about unity. It's about unifying us with him. And I'm here to tell you now there's people waiting by for you, for you. If you don't know him, email us right now, First Church of Social Media at gmail.com. If people waiting by, we will respond instantaneously. 
soon as you add, it's like adding water. <laughs> we're gonna we gonna stir it up quickly. Cause look, it's about that time for all of us to be unity, to be joined together as one. And but we can't do it without him. We can't do it without him. We got to be in the equation, and we want him in our equation. So maybe you knew him, and maybe you backslide. Hey, we still have people waiting by because all of us. In his eye are created like him. So we're going to help each other just as Jesus helped everybody. No matter what the situation was, Jesus was on the scene to help, to heal, deliver, to set free. That's what we're trying to do today. That's what we try to do every day. But I'm sending the other invitation again. Maybe you have backslid. You want to rejoin. Get that get that relationship back. Email us at firstchurchofsocialmedia at gmail.com. Maybe you want to be a part of this ministry. Email us, firstchurchofsocialmedia at gmail.com. There are people waiting by for you right now. If you would like to sow a seed, sow a seed. The first way is, is dollar sign through the cash app. It's dollar sign F-C-O-S-M. Again, that's dollar sign F-C-O-S-M. The second way is to give. You can text. Text the word give. G-I-V-E, the number 2, F-C-S-M. You text all of that to 77977. Again, you can text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, the number 2, F-C-S-M, 2. I'll text all of that to F-C-S-M. Again, I am Pastor Roman Browder. This is First Church Social Media. I know I wasn't before you long. But my main goal is just to reveal what God has revealed to me. And he has revealed that through him there is unity. But we have to look at the picture in that picture. God bless you all. Remember to join us Christmas Eve, 8 o'clock Central Time. God bless you.